morning and welcome to ASI's Tuesday Morning Show where ASI's most outspoken editors talk promo products. I'm Melinda Legos and Joe Haley and I, Joe, give us your best yeehaw. Yeehaw! Joe Haley and I were, guess where? Dallas. Any guesses? ASI Dallas. Um, yes, we had a great week last week in a- ASI Dallas. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But first, let's introduce our other guests. We have the illustrious Michelle Bell here. I think this is the first time we've all been here all I, I mean, know, that's why I figured we should kind of, yeah. you know, reintroduce the group. Michelle, what are you working <laughs> on? Um, I know you're hard to work putting um, the next issue together of Supplier Global Resource. Yes. We actually, we have a cover story where one of our writers went undercover as a distributor. We set her up with a fake distributorship. And wow. she secret shop- shopped some suppliers oh, to see how they go. did. Yeah, how'd she do um, that? She's got some tips for suppliers on so what they could do better. So there were some glitches, I'm guessing. There were some glitches. Overall, I would say they did they did fairly well. But she actually placed orders. So now we have like 50 power banks in the office because she ordered 50 power banks and um, as a real distributor would. And we looked at every single logo to see how the imprint was. She, she ordered awards and because we wanted to see if they came in one piece and weren't broken so we really kind of put them through the and we're going to tell all in the next we are well that's exciting as i have a question as a new distributor was um uh, how was she greeted initially because i think that's what people complain about as far as suppliers are concerned you mean because she didn't have any credit rating or anything right. like that. Right. You know, it's not somebody who's ever called before. It's not yeah. somebody who's ever placed an order before. Only one. So we started off with three suppliers. One of the three w- gave her gave Sarah a, a difficult time as far as getting business started. You know, they wanted to see her bank records and right. uh, a variety of other things. And she pointed them to our Credit Connect system. And she said, well, if you look, I've, I've been rated really well. Um, and then they, they kind of backed off and um, let her proceed with the order. But that was the only one. And are you going to name names in this article? We do name names. Okay. Well, that's and give them grades. I we can't, grade them. I can't wait to see. That's, <laughs> that's a great, fun. great yeah. idea. Kathy Houston from Thank Advantages you. is here. Kathy Houston, um, Advantages, just was nominated um, for its first ever Jesse H. Neal Award from the American Business Journalism. Kathy, Yay. tell us about the, the entry that you're nominated for. Well, Chris Wright- Ruvo is a writer of that, and he does an excellent job. It's he called does. Sales Boost, mm-hmm. and every month we provide five steps to increase your sales for it's the month. It's at the beginning of the It's magazine. at the very beginning and of it's the magazine. Um, it's new, but it's super popular. It's new, it's super popular, and we have quizzes. People love quizzes, so mm-hmm. check it out. Be sure You to can check test it out. your sales mm-hmm. know-how. Yep. Well, congratulations congr- congratulations to everyone here. Um, your sales our know-how. magazines <laughs> are nominated for 10 Neil Awards. Uh, it beat our previous record. I think a couple of years ago, we were nominated for five. So we doubled our previous record. So congrats Woo-hoo. to everyone. Very cool. Great team effort. And Andy Cohn, you were part of that as well. Yes. So yeah. welcome to the show today. Hey, thanks. All right. We've Great got, to be here. We've got a lot to talk about today. Um, we've got Joe Haley. I already introduced you. <laughs> you just asked me for a yeehaw, but that's okay. <laughs> that Hi, was your I'm introduction. <laughs> Oh, you're Joe, here? why don't I? Why don't you tell us what else wah, is on wah, tap wah. for today's show? <laughs> well, Whoa! Unless ever, can we have a round of applause for Joe Haley because he's wanting to feel special this morning? <laughs> Big on, hugs. <laughs> uh, we have a new segment. Uh, we're going to hear from Joy Smith. She's from Partners for Incentives, and she's going to be on every other week to talk about programs that distributors out there should be selling. She'll give you tips, so you'll want to stay tuned for that. We also have another new segment called the Facebook Question. We're going to post a question on Facebook. We're going to read your answers uh, on the air. We They're going to be really highbrow, too, so I'm just warning everybody. Well, Michelle, you <laughs> you may make fun of the question, but I bet that you have a lot to weigh in on it on, the, on today's, at least. But go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, we're also going to look at how to pump up your SEO. We're going to look at five Pump tool- it up. Pump it up. Pump that jam up, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> we have five tools to retain great employees. Marketing myths that make can we young start buyers the show hate a <laughs> brand. <laughs> We have the biggest mistakes you can make as a leader, our favorite things. But let's start off with the industry news in 60 seconds. Andy. Andy. All right. Thank you, Joe. We begin this morning with apparel market news. Gildan Activewear has signed a deal to acquire Comfort Colors, a supplier of garment dyed undecorated T-shirts and sweatshirts. The acquisition signals Gildan's intent to expand into growing fashion basic segment. It also comes as the company reported a sales decrease of 13% in the most recent quarter, the result of lower selling prices. Top 40 distributor news now. 
Staples Inc., the parent company of top 40 distributor Staples promotional products, agreed to a deal last week to acquire Office Depot. The transaction, valued at $6.3 billion, will bring together the two largest office retailers in the U.S. If approved by the FTC, the deal is expected to close later this year. International news now, Alibaba Group has made a move into the mobile phone market after it invested $590 million in Chinese phone maker Meizu Technology. The move, which is a first into hardware for Alibaba, represents an expansion of the company's strategy to sell its mobile operating system. General economic news now, a new survey from Insperity shows that optimism among small businesses is on the rise. A full 61% of respondents said they expect sales to increase in 2015. That number is a big jump from the 49% of respondents in October who said the same thing. And finally, make sure to check out the latest episode of The Joe Show yeah. in Promogram yep. today. Joe, what's hot for today? Graduation sashes. Graduation sashes. Sashes. It's not as easy sashes? as sashes. sashes. <laughs> you know, oh, I, I know people aren't graduating until uh, May and June, but now's the time to start talking to your education clients about buying these. And the thing about this, a lot of times your cap and gown is just rent it for the evening. However, you can keep the sash. So it's a remembrance from high school, college, whatever That's the case may be. That's a good idea. Great right. idea. Very good. Check that out and more in Promogram today. All right. Thanks, Andy. Now we have our friend Leighton Lee from ETS Express on the line, and he is going to give us our Product Safety Minute. Good morning, Leighton. Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody's doing well and staying a little bit warm and mm. safe. I hear from Vinny that it's pretty icy over there. In, uh, it is. Vinny's area. right. It's, it's treacherous. <laughs> uh, well, for our friends in Boston, they're, they're covered in a ton of white stuff, so... Uh, uh, feel for all you out there. Anyways, today, you know, lately I've been kind of branching out a, a bit o outside of the product safety area. Um, last week I, I did a, a little bit of discussion on trademark infringement. Um, this one's a little closer to home on the product compliance. I kind of fit all of this into product responsibility uh, because all of us in our industry, um, it's not just about product safety. It's not about, you know, just making products that aren't going to harm children and, and adults and, and, and strangle and choke people. Uh, we all have a responsibility to ensure that the, the factories and the vendors that we use uh, are, are protecting the workers' safety and their working environment uh, as well. And so today we're talking a little bit about social compliance. And the newsworthy item that I want to point out is that there was another fire in Bangladesh about 10 days ago. Uh, a plastics factory caught on fire. Uh, they're still investigating it as to what was the real cause. They think it was either a boiler that blew up or something like a propane tank that caught fire and blew up. So if any of you have ever seen Google, uh, I mean uh, YouTube videos of propane tanks blowing, they're devastating, whether it's a, a tank for a barbecue or something used on a forklift or something like that. Once that propane tank goes, uh, the entire area within uh, 100 yards catches on fire immediately. So 13 people were, 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 were killed by this, by this fire in Bangladesh, and dozens were injured. So what does that have to do with our industry, first of all? Um, it, it, it really impacts every industry, whether it's retail or promo products or, or any consumer product uh, manufacturing uh, stream. Whenever a factory like this uh, hits the news and a, and a catastrophe uh, gets broadcast through the interweb or, uh, or through the news in other fashion, it impacts us because our end buyers, the, uh, the people that uh, buy our products, start scrutinizing their supply chain. And when their supply chain gets scrutinized, it falls onto all of us to be educated, uh, to be uh, diligent about using vendors and suppliers and the factories in Asia uh, especially, that they are safe, that they have done the due diligence and, you know, have done the audits uh, that uh, ensure that the factories are indeed uh, providing safe working environments uh, against uh, safety hazards like this. So I'm sorry to take a serious tone this morning, but uh, uh, it is an important thing, and all of us need to be aware that there's a problem out there, and we need to uh, be able to, to to speak intelligently to our customers and our clients about it, that we are taking precautions in our industry to, to beef up 
this whole area of social compliance. So you folks stay warm and uh, get out the uh, ice scraper and scrape those cars down so you can drive home tonight, okay? Thanks. We will. Thank you. That was Leighton Lee from ETS Express with our Product Safety Minute. Um, now we're going to switch gears for a moment and speak with Joy Smith. She's from Partners for Incentives, and she is going to talk about tips for selling service anniversary programs. Good morning, Joy. Good morning, and thank you for having me on the air. Uh, we're really excited to work on a mini-series to help increase awareness and sales opportunity for recognition and incentive programs that often aren't sold out, uh, outside of the ad specialty distributor. Uh, there's no reason for that to happen, as the ad specialty distributor can compete and offer programs and services in the recognition and incentive category. We want to start today with the most simple programs to sell, and that's service awards. I'm sure you're all aware of the five-year, 10-year, 15-year awards that companies have to recognize their employees. I'm sure many of you are doing other programs for your clients in this HR space already. For instance, etching crystal year-end awards or creating plaques or lapel pins for these milestone anniversaries. If your client could one-stop shop with you and also purchase their lifestyle service awards, that would streamline their work and also increase your base of sales. We are here to, uh, to, to do this and help you understand how easy it is to set up an online or paper-based service award program that uses retail, brand name, lifestyle merchandise. There are some simple questions you can ask to help define this service award opportunity, and many times these programs are like annuity and they renew year after year. We can help you with this, and this can be a great launching pad to other areas within a company for employee recognition, sales incentive, customer loyalty, and safety incentive programs that you might not currently be working on. In addition, these programs often generate traditional ad specialty sales as support materials. We all know the value of increasing touch points within a customer and that your best customer is your current customer, so why not ask about and work to expand your services within your existing accounts? We only have a few minutes today, but wanted to let you know that we can give you best practices to share with your customers along with trends to help you be the professional in this sales area to contact us after the show. Our ASI number is 76365. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that was Joy Smith. Um, I think everyone um, around the table here has celebrated a milestone anniversary at ASI. I think Andy's bringing up the rear with 10 years <laughs> in April. I just had 10 years. Um, Joe, we had the big the big 2-0 for 2 -0. you. Um, and Kath and Michelle, you are hovering in the 15-plus range, right? Hold yeah. on. I'm not on. Oh, I'm on. I'm back on. Uh, 18. 18 no. and 21. When you, oh, you're 21. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're wow, you've been here longer than Joe. <laughs> yeah, yes. a few months. That's few something. A few months. She's older guys, than me, too. Do you Couple remember months. Was Joe any less cantankerous when he was younger? <laughs> I can I share the story of how I thought you were the biggest dork? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'd like I to don't hear. Care. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I thought he was the biggest dork. It turns out I was right. <laughs> but what, what did he first do that tipped you off that perhaps that was the case? I don't remember. Really. I remember what it was. You, what was it? I remember what it was. Go ahead. She had a son who was born while you came to work here, Andrew. Yeah. And he spent some time in the neonatal unit. Right. And I said, oh, well, my dad works for a company. He's an engineer. Oh, you talked all about. Where they manufacture probably the baby incubator that he was lying in. And that makes me dorky, Andy. Yes. No, I that just makes <laughs> me dorky. I think that's showing interest. No, it shows an interest. It was. It was just the way he delivered it. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. All right. Well. I delivered just the same way I did there. <laughs> We're going to take uh, your calls right now. Today's call-in question or segment is on creative ways to build your personal brand. If you have any creative um, ways um, or questions regarding building your brand, calls 215-953-953. Four nine seven nine on the line now. We have Regina on line two. Good morning, Regina. Hi. Good morning. Um, so I've been in the industry for about five years now, and I was hoping to, you know, I want to get a higher profile. You know, whether that means like sitting on committees or speaking or something like that. But like, I don't really know a lot of the industry decision makers. So I was wondering if you guys had any suggestions for me. Andy Cohn shaking his head. I was actually shaking my head at Joe. <laughs> I, I think I, I mean I think the best way to start, um, it, not necessarily within the industry per se, but it, it, you know, if, 
if you're targeting clients in your local area, I think you want to do it more in a local way. Um, so speaking at Chamber of Commerce events, being the expert, um, you know, the marketing or promotional expert um, in your area is probably even more valuable to your business than uh, than what you could do um, within the industry. Um, so I, that would be my first suggestion is to, to look at local things you could do, um, community events that you can uh, you can get involved in. Um, like I said, Chamber of Commerce uh, meetings that um, you could speak at. You could obviously provide much in the way of uh, marketing expertise, and that's, uh, that's something that certainly that Chamber of Commerce events are looking for. So that would be the first place I would start. Okay, because Michelle, I was going to pick on you. I know that um, one of your ways that you always often advocate people to market themselves and build their brand is through self promos. Yes, that's correct. So I, you know, I would say it sounds like um, that she's been to a few sh trade shows. I would um, spend some time in the booth with suppliers and ask them about their specials for self promotion campaigns. Also, go to some of the networking events like Promo Kitchen. Um, maybe meet some of those people. I mean, this industry. The ASI networking clubs, for, for instance. Yeah. This industry craves people um, to be mentors and to help with volunteering for different committees, um, and it's a great way to network. All right. We hope that gives you some ideas. Regina, thanks so much for calling in. Thank you. And on line five, we have Stanley. Is this Stanley from California? This is Stanley from sunny California, yes. How are you, Stanley? Good. I'm glad to see the band back together. <laughs> we're, we're back together. Just like Yeah, we're Matt. worried that, you know. Yeah, hey, we worried that hey, you, guys you guys were going to like, you know. Sorry, speaking of the band, did you guys see, I missed it, but ACDC, I guess, oh my opened God. the I Grammys. They were awesome. And I heard that was the best performance it of the night. It was really good. Uh, well, I missed no, it. No, it was amazing. Grammys, not so good. Yeah, well, oh, I I've, liked it. I've got to go uh, check that out. I like Anyway, Stanley, what's your comment today? Well, my comment is one of the things that, that, that we're starting to do more and more, and I'm finding it easier than I thought it would be, is we're approaching our vendors, and as far as getting our brand out there, uh, we're starting to concern ourselves with our customers' experience when the items arrive to our customers for our branding, as we're always concerned with how our customers are going to make an impression on their end users. And so we're starting to work with a lot more vendors, and we're finding it really easy because they're being real receptive to putting – our labels and products, we're working on a bag order right now with a vendor that is actually swapping out their labels for our labels. And we're finding that the, the uh, reorder rate and the referral rate and the phone call rate are, are really starting to make, a, make an impact. We're starting to you know, see the results of it. And we're talking to a couple companies about uh, customizing the boxes that we actually are sending to the vendors so that when they package up the merchandise, it's in brand new boxes with our logo on the outside of the boxes, and it's working out pretty nicely. Um, you know, my question to you is, when when we're uh, when we're, we're when we're trying to brand out into the community, do you think that I've always thought that it wasn't all that effective to put your logo on cheap items as opposed to what we tell our clients pick stronger items and give it out to fewer people. What are your thoughts about that? So I would agree with that. I mean, you don't want to be known as the guy that provides cheap pens for people. I mean, you know, if your name's on it, you want to make sure it's high quality. I think you also want to be creative. Uh, you know, you, you want to uh, encourage your clients to be as creative as possible. So anything that you're putting your own logo on, you want to be creative with as well. Um, you know, and like Joe said, just putting it on a, a, a basic uh, cheap item might might not get that message across. So try to be creative with it. All right. Well, thanks for calling, Stanley. Have a great day. You too. Have a great one. All right. We're going to pause for a message from today's show sponsor and when we return um, we're going to take a moment to talk about ASI Dallas. How about that? At ASI we know that education is the key to success so we're excited to announce our newly reimagined online learning center. Log in and test the all new intuitive interface. Share photos, stories and communicate with other ASI members who are learning along with you. Expand your knowledge with wikis, discussion boards and more than 350 courses which include valuable marketing and sales information. And for your convenience, the Online Learning Center now uses a single sign-on access like your other ASI services. Best of all, it's free. Become an industry expert and see what's new on the ASI Online Learning Center at www.asicentral.com slash online learning. 
Welcome back to ASI's Tuesday Morning Show. Joe Haley, you Yo. and I were at ASI Dallas last Yeehaw, week. Yeehaw, yes we were. What was your favorite part? You know what? The Minute to Win It was a lot of fun, and we got Explain there Explain what that is. The Minute to Win It is we have two teams of five uh, players, suppliers or distributors. They put their name into a hat. They're picked randomly, and they have to compete challenges that take a minute to do in order to win, you know, points to win prizes at the end. It's a fun networking event. People have a lot of fun, and there is a, a video, a montage video online at ASICentral.com. And I yeah, those see people were really into it. it they were really oh into my God, it. And they we'll love be, it. We'll be doing it again in uh, Chicago as a great um, after education day activity. So, so since we're involved with it, we get there a little early, and as the crowd's coming and starting to speak to people, what I really liked is I spoke to four or five people at the minute to win it, who actually listen to the radio show, they're too scared to call in. I know. So I always tell people to call, call in. in. Wait, call that's in. Who cares? But here, here was here was a comment that I thought was very interesting and something we should look at. Someone wants it to be able to access it mobily. So if they're in the process of driving to or from a client or having to take care of some business on the road, they can still listen to. It. I saw you can listen to it. You know, on the um, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. The um, what do you call them? Archive. Yes, archive. Podcast. Thank you. Um, and they said, yeah, yeah, that, that's great. But also walking around the office, too. If you've got to get, a, get up and go away from your computer, it would be nice to have that mobile ability to listen. To nice it. to take us or, with you. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to yeah. say, we could just bring you to their office, and you could walk around with them and talk to <laughs> oh them. Talk to them all day. Jesus. <laughs> that would be exciting. Um, so, no, that, that was, uh, it was really great to listen to these people, and they, they find it extremely useful, the topics we talk about um, and how we can put it into perspective for the industry, you know, suppliers and distributors, and they, they really really find it useful and they love everyone when well, i when andy and i saw stanley in uh vegas he had a suggestion that the table should be a crescent half or mm -hmm. like a like crescent. the view yeah like the view so um you could see i'll be rosie o'donnell L little, I think little does he know getting kicked off or something Joking yeah, whoopee. <laughs> little does he know that not everybody here actually wants to be seen <laughs> Well, there's no escaping that. Okay. Um, Joe, my favorite part about uh, ASI Dallas, and I think you enjoyed this too, was meeting Troy Aikman yes. um, from the Cowboys. You got to interview yeah, him. Yeah, he's 300 feet tall, and oh my, my, God. my yes. neck is still hurting from looking <laughs> up at him. And he was right behind, he was and right in front squinting, of a light. like you were so far away, I'm, you had to squint at him. I had to, well, I had to look that? into that light. There's that light was right there. Well, he was great, and he, um, I thought, left great messages. It's funny, because I'm a, like a really optimistic person, but he actually um, had a different view on things, which was really interesting. You know, um, Tim Andrews, our CEO, asked him, you know, okay, so you started off at, with the Cowboys, and you, you won one game out of 15. And he was quick to point out, by the way, he didn't even play in the he game that they won. The game, and then just in short order, a few years later, you know, bam, winning three Super Bowls. You know, how do you do that? And one thing he said is, you have to always remember how bad it feels to lose. Okay, so not just how good it feels to win. That's great. But, you know, you have to remember um, – how hard it is, you know, how hard it is to make a sale, how hard it is to um, win a game, and that will keep you going. Yeah. And I remember Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank. I mean, she came from very humble beginnings, mm -hmm. if you remember. Yeah, you know, got a loan from her boyfriend. She was a waitress. Now, you know, she's a billionaire. But, um, but she says that, too. You have to stay hungry, and you have to just remember yeah. how hard it was when you were, you know, living on ramen noodles and, you know, pounding the pavement. And um, so, anyway, I, yeah. that was the message I took away from that. Yeah, I thought he, he was great. You know, he said he didn't like playing football. He liked winning football. Yeah. He says, you know, you go out there and after you lose, that that's not fun. The fun part's <laughs> winning. So. Yeah, it was interesting too. He said there were some guys on the team who didn't mind, seemed to mind to lose as bad. Like they were joking around on the bus afterwards, and Jimmy Johnson would get in there and just, you know, rip them a new one. Basically, he wanted them to know how bad it felt to lose. And then, conversely, when they won, he would make it like they won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. He would be the best champion ever. So, um, anyway, good. That was good info from. ASI Dallas, and if you missed it, we will have another football great. Where, Kathy? Who's speaking in Chicago? Um, uh, oh, Kathy. What's his name? All right. Peyton Manning. <laughs> <laughs> Peyton Manning, <laughs> who is another um, <laughs> Super Bowl great. He's playing for the Broncos, and we love him. At least I love him. Yeah, um, so he's he going to be in Chicago, um, so we'll get more great advice from him. Um, all right, so we put a question on Facebook this week, and I'm going to canvas our little group here, too. Um, what's your favorite airport in the world and why? And, um, Michelle, you have or you have some of the comments? Yep, I do. Um, well, I'll read one of them. Paul Kenny, his favorite airport is um, in Johannesburg, the Johanna Johannesburg OR Tambo Airport. And apparently he had to spend the night there once. And everyone was really friendly. They found a great cafe, lots of drinks, slept on the floor. And it sounds like 
Paul had a great time in the Johannesburg airport. What's another <laughs> popular airport that we got from our Facebook comments? Um, Bonnie Johnson. Oh. Bonnie Johnson says um, Austin Bergstrom. Ah, you've been there. In Texas, I have. And that is a very cool little airport. They have um, live music playing all the time. They have great artwork. Um, they have great brisket and barbecue. Yeah, good food's important, especially yeah. if you have to hang out at the airport for a while. Um, anyone here have a worst or best airport choice? Heathrow is hell. It's a really? nice circle of hell. Yeah. Why do you? Uh, it's it's um, not well organized. I mean, famously, people often miss flights and connections because it's so hard to get from one place to the other. I think that's O'Hare. You, you could have a connection well, at O'Hare, so and, and you you could it's miss it even so if you land an hour early. Yeah, it's really big. Ugh. Kathy and I had a lovely oh experience in Albuquerque. We had an emergency landing. We were leaving ASI Vegas. Emergency landing in Albuquerque. It was like 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So we land, and all of a sudden, you know, we're all hungry and just dumped there. And so we go into this restaurant slash bar, and the woman's like, well, we're only open for 10 more minutes. And we're like, okay. So we order. And just as we're getting our food and, like, sipping our first drink, she's like, get out. You have to get out now. Yeah. And started screaming at all of us, like yeah. a whole plane full of passengers. And, like, was putting down <laughs> It was things. ridiculous. And, like, we, she, wouldn't even, she wouldn't let us walk away with our drinks, so we had to chug them. And then, when and we then the airport was closed. Then when we finally got back on the plane after that harrowing experience and having an emergency land, and then we had to pick up other people that had an emergency land from somewhere else. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> and then we get finally. <laughs> It wasn't like a local bus. It, uh, you I swear, <laughs> you're it making was. stops. Oh, and people <laughs> were <laughs> sitting in our stops. seats too, because the new people got our seats. Yeah, and I've never heard of a plane that had to make it stops. It was crazy. To pick it was the others. craziest thing yeah. ever. Our and landing it, was to pick up someone else. It was U.S. Way. Air, by the way. You were scared. Mm. And then we get on the plane right. finally to finally get going. And Melinda says to me, wouldn't it suck if we crashed now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember saying that. But, you, you know, <laughs> I, had, I had, had to chug a I, glass I of thought wine. you were the <laughs> optimist. <laughs> yeah, really. What I think I was trying to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it worked. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Joe Haley, worst or best airport? You know, they're all the same. I mean, it is what it is, travel. I do like flying into San Diego, though. That's a pretty cool landing when you come down that hill. I, that is cool. I like flying into um, and out of John Wayne in Southern California. Why? It's just easy to get in and out of. It's a nice airport, but it's so easy to get in yeah. and out of. Now, Austin's like that, too. Austin's a smaller airport, so yep. it's like there's no huge lines. You get to your gate. Planes land on time. Planes take off on time. All right. Well, people will continue to weigh on this on Facebook. Um, in the meantime, Andy, SEO, huge buzzword these days. Every company wants to get more of it. So what's your advice today? So here are a couple uh, quick tips. We'll put the rest on our website. But these are some things you could do uh, on a low-cost or no-cost even basis. Um, the first is to regularly update your website. So if you are not putting blog updates or new testimonials um, or even video interviews, uh, video case studies, if you're not putting up any uh, new information on a um, at least weekly basis, but even daily basis would be better, even a quick uh, update on a new promotion that you're running, something new that has keywords in it that Google can pick up ultimately. If they see stale, <coughs> excuse me, stale content, then they're going to think that your website is stale as well and you'll show very low on any uh, Google rankings. Um, second, uh, utilize links. Make sure things are very linked on your website, so pages that are disparate are linked as well. Um, you have things that are putting them together. Uh, Google likes to see that that you're uh, linking your site within its within itself, but also to other sites as well. So utilize as many links as you can. And also um, make sure you have uh, keywords uh, all over your homepage and your site, your homepage being the most important. But uh, find the keywords that are most important to your business, not just promotional products, but it could be imprinted t-shirts. It could be uh, logoed pens. It could be things that, uh, that people are actually searching for um, as opposed to, uh, you know, they, ran, they don't randomly search for promotional products. It's not mm. a word that people tend to, or phrase rather, that people tend to search for. So what do they search for? It's things that they're actually looking for. Maybe it's, uh, it's you know, uh, uh, party gear. Um, it could be things that, that you know, uh, like Joe was saying, graduation sashes. It, it could be many things, but get specific, specific with some of the keywords that you're using so it can actually show up on Google. All right, we're going to put some more of those tips on SICentral.com slash radio. We just have enough time for Michelle Bell's favorite part of the show where we talk about our favorite products of the week. Michelle, what do you have? 
Mine is a little product that Andy and I found in Vegas. Remember that? Yeah, Ooh. sure. And she demoed it on phones, and she said it wouldn't work on mine, but I'm going to try well, it anyway. That's because you have an antiquated thing. No. What is but it? But it's this little rubber band, and you put it on your phone, and then if you're out at a club or a bar or something, your ID and your credit cards just go right in the back. So oh, you can just good. all you have to do is carry your and phone. And they don't fall out? They do not fall I've out. I've seen that so on the Joe Show. Tight. Okay, Joe. <laughs> oh, <it's> <laughs> little plug for the Joe Show. <laughs> cool. So it is from uh, Grab and Go Bands, and it is ASI 57902, though I think that they have new um, variations because they were brand new at the Vegas show. And you can pick your colors, I bet. They can. They have like 20 colors you can pick. All right. Pretty cool. Joe Haley, what do you have? What do I got? I have something called the Clip It Vent Mount. It actually men- uh, mounts your telephone onto your air vents in your car. It's really easy on and off because of the spring-loaded mechanism there. You get this in the hand find them online. Oh, it's great for anyone in the automotive industry, uh, anyone who's traveling, sales reps. Uh, it's a good gift for them. And you get, ooh, also for car rental companies. Wouldn't it be nice to have that in your car? And then when you leave, say, take that thing with you. Anyway, find them at handstands59525. <laughs> and online, they're at handstandspromo.com. Wait, All right. Stanley says LAX is his favorite airport because they buy promotional products from him. Oh, oh, that's <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> Shout <Hey> Stanley. Out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Andy Cohen. Mine is something that I actually desperately need. It is a magnetic windshield cover, uh, and it, it put over your windshield for the winter so it can protect your windshield from ice and snow that I am afraid of these I days. I think that ship has sailed My for the, God. the winter. Um, no, it hasn't sailed for me. <laughs> That's for damn sure. <laughs> Check it out online. It comes from Advanced Outdoor Concepts, which is ASI 32167. All right. And Kathy? Mine is an alien-shaped stress reliever from Aerial Premium Supply, ASI 36730. And I just picked it because today is Extraterrestrial Cultural Day. I heard that. Yes. What, so do, we, what do we do to celebrate? Um, what are we going to do? I don't know. Michelle, you've got a lot of interesting friends. What are they doing? <laughs> 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 They're watching the X-Files at home and getting high. <laughs> there is going to be a new X-Files, right? There is. All right. Oh Sorry. Joy. Sorry to interrupt. You finished your the little The truth is out there, no, Andy. Did. That's it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you can check out all these products at asicentral.com slash radio. We are out of time. Thanks to everyone. But we want to wish a happy birthday to Matt Barnes. Oh, Matt Barnes. Happy oh, birthday to Matt Barnes. Birthday. Yo, Matt Barnes. Happy birthday. 45 today. All right. <laughs> 50 years old. We'll see you next week. Have a great week, everyone.